السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله تعالى أعطيكم جايز مينت تا لاغ اون Alright. So, to you all once again. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Obviously, you know, subhanAllah, we're seeing some of the very disturbing news that's coming out from in, from different parts of the world with the continuous, um, you know, bombings and things of that sort. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on all the victims. And obviously the most disturbing today coming from al Madina al-Munawwara. Um, there are still conflicting reports, meaning there are still some sources that are saying that it's a cylinder and still some sources, in fact, official sources that are actually even identifying the name of a bomber. Um, in any case, uh, if, it, if it was indeed intentional, then it's a very sad day uh, for, for us and we ask Allah to have uh, mercy on us and to protect our ummah and to protect um, uh, the beloved city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma ameen. So obviously I, I struggled with whether or not I was going to do this today, but I figured it's the Qur'an, so it's important for us to continue to uh, talk about the Qur'an, inshallah ta'ala, and reflect and ponder upon the Qur'an. So here we go, inshallah, and we're going to finish now. We, we have uh, just 29. It's looking more and more likely that Eid will be on uh, Wednesday. Um, so we'll do the 29th just today, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll do the 30th just um, tomorrow. So <clears throat> today we're on the 29th juz and um, so we'll start once again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu wa salatu wa salamu wa salamu wa salamu wa The 29th juz and the 30th juz are very similar in that you have multiple surahs and they all sort of revolve around a similar theme. So the theme of the Day of Judgment is very, very, very dominant and you know in, in both of these last two juz of the Qur'an. And obviously, the cor you know the cornerstone of our religion after the belief in Allah is the belief in the hereafter. Al imanu billah wal yawm akhir, to believe in Allah and to believe in the last day, and everything in between is to bring us closer uh, to those two things. So we believe in Allah, we believe in the last day. Allah sent angels with messages to His messengers uh, to deliver that message to us, um, and so. The, at the end of the day, it's the belief in Allah, it's the belief in the Akhirah, and that's the dominant theme in Makki Qur'an, and especially when it comes to these last two uh, chapters of the Qur'an. So when it comes to Juz 29, first you have Surah Al-Mulk, and Surah Al-Mulk is also known as Surah Al-Mani'ah, uh, the Surah which forbids, and the reason being is that, uh, you know, the narration which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions that Surah Al-Mulk is a, is a protection from the punishment um, of the great, that if a person recites it on a nightly basis, that it would serve as a punishment, as a protection from Adab al Qabr. So it's a very powerful surah, and it's one you know in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about um, many different things. The proof of His uh, dominion, Subhanahu wa Taala, aladhi khalaq al mauta wal hayat, the one who created um, you know non-existence and existence, who created life and who created death, liabluakum ayyukum ahsanu amala, so that He could test you to see who amongst you would have the best of deeds, not akthar wa'amana, not the most of deeds, but the best of deeds, to test the quality of your deeds. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and overlooking, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite His might and His power, uh, chooses to show His benevolence and His generosity to His creation. But we see a lot of the proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah. We also see the regret of the people on the Day of Judgment that turned away from the message. We see... Um, the celebration of those that did accept the message, Inna ladina yakhshawna rabbahum bil ghayb, those who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who called upon their Lord in the unseen, lahum maghfiratun wa ajrun kareem, then they will have the forgiveness of their Lord and they will have a great reward. So the people that prepared for the moment where they would see everything and they worshipped Allah in the unseen in this world, meaning they did deeds privately um, when no one could see them, 
affirming their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, affirming their belief in the hereafter. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them um, protection. So this is the surah that, you know, that, that, that mentions to us the celebration of the people as they enter into paradise and those who believed in the unseen and those who recognize that this life was a test because it starts off with, the surah starts off with the recognition that this is a test and then it goes into how people responded to that test. So for some people, they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, they worshipped Him, they prepared themselves, they, did the, they, they worked deeds of righteousness on this earth, believing in that. For some people, um, you, know, you, you, would, you would see that they would be asked, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ have, have not warners come to you? Did you not receive the message? قَالُوا بَلَى قَدْ جَاءَنَا نَذِيرٌ And they would say, yes, that a warner did come to us. فَكَذَّبْنَا وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ But then we denied and we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send anything. Uh, at the end of the surah, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ زُلْفَةً سِيئَتْ وُجُوهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا That on that day then their faces are darkened and they, you know, they are, they're completely in, in humiliation and they are told that this is what you used to long for, this is what you used to call for, you used to say that you know, if there's really any consequences to the way that we live our lives here, then go ahead and show it to us, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, um, <clears throat> Surah Al-Mulk sort of talks about the aftermath. Uh, Surah Al-Qalam, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. Uh, Surah Al-Qalam is also a Meccan surah, and it consists of 52 ayat. And this is a surah that was revealed extremely early on. So. Allah knows best, but it's the, the, the order of revelation seems to be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first revealed, um, uh, obviously, Surah Al-Alaq, the first few ayat of Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, Surah Al-Muddathir, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Al-Muzammil, and then we have Surah Al-Qalam and Surah Al-Duha. So these are the first few surahs that were revealed. This surah here, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the pen, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon, that you are not, in, you know, by the favor of your Lord, you are not a madman, you are not seeing things. These are not uh, simply, you know, uh, visions of demons or something of that sort. This is revelation, divine revelation that is coming to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you are not a madman, you have not lost your mind, you have indeed seen Jibreel alayhi salam, you have indeed seen uh, these miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are a prophet of Allah, wa inna laka ajran ghayru mamnoon, and you have a reward that has been assured for you, that is everlasting, that never spoils, wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim, and you are upon an exalted standard of character, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassuring the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa um, after Surah Al-Alaq, which is a command, Iqra, and Surah Al-Muddathir, Qum Fa'andhir, which is to call, uh, stand up and call the people, and then Surah Al-Muzammil, Qum uh, layla illa qalila, to stand and to pray at night. Here, this is a surah that reassures the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this surah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, it has sent it to reassure the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he did Surah Al-Duha, which comes around the same, the same time frame. So to reassure the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi not to compromise, you know, فَسَتُبُصِرُ وَيُبُصِرُونَ بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ We will see who amongst you is the one that has been afflicted or tested. Um, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa says, وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فَيُدْهِنُونَ They wish that you would compromise and they would readily compromise on their beliefs. So don't compromise on your beliefs because that's, that's not the point of this. The point of this is that you have to show a level of dedication. You have to show that you're going to stick this out, that you're going to see this through. And you're going to insist upon your beliefs uh, no matter what happens and no matter what persecution um, you face from the people. Uh, so the first section of Al-Qalam uh, addresses uh, the greatness of the Prophet Sallallahu It addresses, it, it's, it's a reassurance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The second section of Surah Al-Qalam, really interestingly enough, it's the story of the people of the garden. Inna balawnahum kama balawna ashab al jannah. The people of the garden. So in this surah, you have, in, in terms of the order of revelation, the first example for the people of Quraysh and the first example for the Prophet. So the first story, as an example of the people of the Quraysh, the first uh, parable is drawn for the people of Quraysh, and also the first uh, method, 
is drawn for the Prophet wasallam. So for the people of Quraysh, it's the story of the people of the garden. So this was a garden um, <clears throat> that was situated near um, Yemen. So it's close to where they are. And, at this, and, and, and the owner of that garden was a generous man that used to allow his garden to be opened up uh, to the poor and who used to readily give to the poor from this garden that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him. When he passed away, his offspring became uh, stingy and <clears throat> they started to make excuses to not give to the poor. And then finally they plotted uh, to keep the produce, to keep to, to, to reap the to get the fruits off of the trees before the poor would even be able to see and to even ask and to have any access to that garden whatsoever. So the children of that man became greedy and they tried to uh, you know they, they tried to protect um, <clears throat> you know their own share without thinking about those that were outside. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the entire garden. So as a result of their greed, they lost everything. Uh, this is the first example for the people of Quraysh. Some of the scholars said that it's just like Ibrahim salam, which we'll see in the, in, uh, the last juz, in Juz Amma, Surah Quraysh. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ That they should worship the Lord of this house, the one who fed them when they were poor, and who granted them safety and security uh, from, from, you know, from anything that would do harm to them. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the city of Mecca by the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And as the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam, it's necessary that you now, uh, that, that you don't allow yourself to be overcome by greed or arrogance or forget where the blessing came to you in the first place. So this is the first example for the people of Quraysh. Then you have the first example for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, <clears throat> which is uh, the Nun, Yunus alayhi salam. So the first prophet mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu in order of revelation is the Prophet Yunus Alayhi Salam to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Don't give up on your people the way that Yunus Alayhi Salam once gave up on his people. So you're just getting started. These attacks that you're facing are just, you know, they're just starting. This is the very beginning of your revelation. It's going to get worse for a few years, but it will eventually get better. And don't give up on your people because eventually these people will return to being believers. Okay, collectively they will come to be believers. So don't give up on your people. Don't uh, despair the way that Yunus alayhi salam once did. And had it not been for the favor of your Lord, then Yunus alayhi salam uh, would have died a humiliating death. So this this is the first mithal, the first method to Quraysh and the first method to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi The first example to the Quraysh are the people of the garden and the first example to the Prophet Sallallahu is Yunus Alayhi Salam to draw inspiration from Yunus Alayhi Salam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also mentions um, you know, uh, the situation of the people on the Day of Judgment in this surah as well. Um, as he does in, in, in many different uh, surahs here as we see in, in Juz 29. Um, but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقُ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ The day that the shin will be uncovered and they would be invited, they would be called to prostrate, they would be called to make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they would not be able to do so. Why? They used to be called, قَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ They used to be called to, to make sujood, to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they were salimun, while they were completely um, you know, uh, free of any defects and while well, they were healthy enough to do so. Nothing was stopping their backs from bending um, in this dunya. So there is a time at the Day of Judgment where people would be told to make sujood and they would not be able to make sujood. And this is, you know, very powerful because subhanAllah, some of you might remember the video, um, you know, it came out uh, several years ago actually, it must have been like 10 years ago about the young man from Saudi Arabia that was paralyzed from neck down and he was asked what his regrets were and he mentioned that, um, you know, or what his three wishes would be. He mentioned that one of his wishes would be that he would be able to make sujood and he would not get up from that sujood. Why? Because he said that, you know, when I was healthy, before I was in the state, I used to be told to pray and I would refuse to pray. But now, you know, subhanAllah, I can't make sujood anyway. And he said, I'm afraid to be amongst those people that would show up on the Day of Judgment and they would be called to, to do sujood and they would not be able to do so. So the, the power of a sajda, the power of making sujood, 
Now realize in Surah Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the faces of the people. Okay, the faces of the people. Uh, that, you know, that they are completely humiliated and they're told, This is what you used to call for. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning a later state in the Day of Judgment, which is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before the Sirat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays uh, a saq, lays the, the shin bare, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them to make sujood. So they're unable to make sujood. Surah al haqqa mentions another stage of the Day of Judgment, which is the next surah, which is when we receive our books. Okay? So some people receiving their book in the right hand and some people receiving their book in the left hand. So those that receive their book in the right hand are those that used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil ghaib. Those that used to worship Allah in the unseen as mentioned in Surah Al-Mulk. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ The one who receives the book in his right hand goes out to the people and says, Hey, look at my book. إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُنَافِقٍ حِسَابِي Look at all these good deeds that I used to do بِلْ غَيْبِ That I used to do previously, that I used to do uh, in private when no one saw me. I knew that this day was coming. إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُنَافِقٍ حِسَابِي I knew that the hisab would come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ So he will live a life of pleasure in a high garden uh, you know, with, with low-hanging fruit, that go ahead and eat and drink and enjoy yourself and rejoice because of that which you used to do in, 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 in this dunya, in the world before, in the life before the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions the, the, the next stage, And then the one who receives the book in his left hand would say that, I wish I never received the book. Ya laytani lam uta kitabia, wa lam adri ma hisabia. And I wish that I never knew what my record would be. Ya laytaha kanat al qadia. I wish that this was it. I wish that I would cease to exist. Ma aghna anni maliya, halaka anni sultania. My money has done me no good, and I have completely lost any authority. I can't seek help from anybody. So this is a different stage of the Day of Judgment now that's being mentioned in Surah Al-Haqqa. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make us amongst uh, the people who receive their books in the right hand. Allahumma ameen. So you have these different stages, right? Now, Surah Al-Ma'arij goes even a step further. So Surah Al-Ma'arij continues now. That person that insisted on, 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 on rejecting... Um, the divine guidance and rejecting revelation and, and try to seek a life in which they, they, they would not be held accountable. They thought that they could live their lives without being held accountable. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is the last stage of the day of judgment. The last stage of the day of judgment. Verses 8 through 14, Surah Al Ma'arij, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask a person that if you could get yourself out of this situation, if you could ransom yourself by presenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entire world of gold, you know, you, you, could, you could present the world in, in gold twice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get yourself out of the situation, would you do it? And on that day, at that moment, when a person is standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in those last moments, they would, they would be willing to ransom their children, they would be willing to give up their children, they'd be willing to give up the earth, they'd be willing to do, they'd be, they would say, Ya yeah, Allah, send me back to the earth and I will worship you nonstop, I won't stop worshipping, I'll do this, I'll do that. They would be willing to do anything, to sacrifice family, to sacrifice people, to sacrifice their, their material wealth, anything to get themselves out of the horrible situation that they are in on the Day of Judgment. But on that day, it means absolutely nothing. So those are the last moments and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say that I asked you for much less than that. I didn't ask you for your children and I didn't ask you for the world filled with gold. I asked you for much less than that and you refused. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, <coughs> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this last phase in Surah Al-Ma'arij of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So it's actually, if, if, you realize, if you're paying attention here in these last few surahs, every surah is giving us a glimpse of a different stage um, of the Day of Judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ 
he mentions to us uh, the believers and he mentions those الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعْلُومٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ وَالَّذِينَ يُصَدِّقُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينِ So on and so forth. So Allah mentions the believers who are regular in their prayers that, that used to uh, give out of charity uh, to those that asked and those who refrained from asking. Those that used to bear witness to the last day and those that did not have doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who, who used to uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in public and private. Those who used to stay away from Zina, they used to stay away from adultery and fornication. Um, they used to fulfill their trusts and their promises. They used to bear witness with truth and with equity. Uh, they used to pray on time. So all of these different things are now mentioned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ مكرمون, That these people will be honored with Jannah. That this is the definition of الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ This is how they used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private. Not just with their worship, but with their business transactions, with their testimonies. Um, when they had opportunities to, to look at things that they should not have looked at. When they had um, opportunities to live out their desires in impermissible ways. And all of, despite all of that, they still feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ These are, This is a full description of those who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, in private. So they are honored in Jannah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, give them, has given them uh, you know, the promise of a great reward uh, to follow. The next surah is Surah Nuh. So Surah Nuh is Nuh alayhi salam calling upon his people day and night, um, invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a very heartfelt dua, it's a prayer. Inni da'utuhum laylan wa nahara, you know, falam yazidhum du'a'i illa firara. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعُوتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ جَعْلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ وَأَصَرُّوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا اسْتِكْبَارًا That Nuh says, I call them day and night. Private conversations, public addresses. You know, I, I, I tried uh, warning them. I tried promising them paradise. I called them to mercy. I called them to forgiveness. I warned them of punishment. I tried everything with these people. Ya Allah, every time I increased in my da'wah towards them, they increased in their bad behavior and in their rejection towards me. So every time I tried calling them more, the only thing that it led to, oh Allah, was more persecution towards me. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا And I told them, oh, you know, seek the forgiveness of your Lord, then, and verily He is off forgiving. يُرْسِدِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send upon you you know, uh, rain and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would send upon you risk and sustenance and would replenish your wealth and give you children and, and, and make all of these things easy for you. Meaning if you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-razzaq, the provider, if you do that which he commands you to do, your society would be blessed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send upon you things that would be blessings and in, in not just in the next life, but in this life as well. So basically now it's focusing on in Surah Nuh, that this is for your own good here as well. This is not just for, you know, for your hereafter. This is for your own good here as well. And these gods that you worship, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are of no benefit to you whatsoever. They're, they will not avail you at all. And focus instead on your one true God. Turn towards Him and things will happen for you. Goodness will come to you in your life. Of course, the people of Nuh did not listen. And so they were destroyed. Now Surah Nuh ends off with the destruction of the destruction of man, that, that all of mankind was destroyed except for those who followed Nuh, those who followed true guidance. What's the next surah? Surah Al Jinn. SubhanAllah. Look at the sequence. Surah Al Jinn. That as human beings turned away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the jinn that came to respond to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sama'na Quran and Ajaba. They said that we heard of an amazing Qur'an, Yahdi ila al-Haq, that guides to the truth and that guides to a straight path. And so another species, another creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Surah Al-Jinn tells us about the good and the bad jinn, just as Surah Nuh tells us about good and bad human beings. But after the destruction of humanity, after many, you know, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed for humanity, um, to be drowned, except for those who followed Nuh alayhi salam and were placed on the Safina, on the Ark of Nuh alayhi salam. You move on now to Surah Al-Jinn, uh, which shows you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not depend upon anyone and the message 
um, of the Prophet ﷺ. The message of Islam is not dependent upon anyone. The next surah is Surah Al-Muzammil. Surah Al-Muzammil was revealed in two phases. The, it was the third surah, the third revelation to the Prophet ﷺ. The first page of Surah Al-Muzammil was the command to pray Qiyam al-Layl. قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِصْفَهُ أَوْ انْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا أَوْ زِلْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَغْطِيلًا إِنَّا سُنُلْقِ عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا So on and so forth. So Surah Al-Muzammil commanded the Prophet ﷺ to pray for a part of the night. So it actually made the first page of Surah Al-Muzammil, as Aisha radiallahu anha says, the first page of Surah Al-Muzammil made Qiyam al standing up at night, obligatory. So the first prayer that was obligatory was Qiyam al before the five prayers, Qiyamul layl was the first legislated, the night prayer was the first legislated prayer to the Prophet ﷺ and to the believers because as they suffered from intense persecution, Qiyamul layl was a necessity. The night prayer was a necessity. And that's a powerful lesson to us that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says that when persecution is, is uh, enhanced and when a person faces intensified scrutiny for their call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they really feel the heat of persecution and they feel the heat of fitna around them, that the only thing that's going to keep them grounded is their prayer at night, Qiyamul Layl. And we're seeing and we're living the beauty, the, the blessings of Qiyamul Layl in these last few nights of Ramadan. So the first page of, of, uh, of, of Surah Al Muzammil made it obligatory to pray Qiyamul Layl. The second portion of Surah Al Muzammil. Um, made it recommended. So the last ayah, which is the second page, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ تَقُومُ أَدْنَى مِنْ ثُرُثَيِ اللَّيْلِ وَنِصْفَهُ وَثُرُثَهُ وَطَائِفَةٌ مِنَ الَّذِينَ مَعَكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledging the prayers of the Prophet sallallahu and the believers, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now making it uh, mustahab, making it a recommended act and removing the obligation um, of, uh, uh, of praying Qiyam al-Layl. The next surah is Surah Al-Muddathir. Um, surah Al-Muddathir is Qum Fa'anbir. The first surah revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu after Surah Al-Alaq. And this was the first time that he saw Jibreel Alayhi Salaam in his angelic form. As the Prophet Sallallahu said that he was walking and he, and, and he saw Jibreel Alayhi Salaam fill up the entire horizon. And the Prophet Sallallahu uh, ran home to Khadija Radiallahu Anha. He said, Zambiluni, Dathiruni, wrap me up and cover me. And so as Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha covered him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the next revelation came to him. And this was Surah Al-Muddathir, the command to call the people. And the command to call the people to what? To warn them of, to warn them of, قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ To warn them of the hereafter, to warn them of the Day of Judgment. The next surah is Surah Al-Qiyamah. Okay, the next surah is exactly what the Prophet sallallahu was warning them of. And that is the resurrection. And subhanAllah, Surah Al-Qiyamah is in complete, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's in much detail um, of what the resurrection will be like. And it mentions those who are divided into groups. That some blessed people whose faces are bright because they're staring at their Lord as their Lord is pleased with them. No, wait. Um, Subhanallah. It escaped me. <laughs> I guess I'd have to I'd, I'd have to wait to see it in the comments, but because I don't have actually just twenty nine in front of me, I just have my notes. Basira tadunu an yuf ala biha faqira. So Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the wretched faces on the day of judgment. Um, you know, that, 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 that will be horrid and that, that would be certain to be thrown into hellfire. These faces of people as they are darkened and as they are uh, humiliated and they are, they, are, they are seeing doom in front of their eyes and they know um, that that which follows is, uh, is, is, is nothing but agony. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِيَ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاق وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الفراق. وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ الْمَسَاقُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those last moments of life when death comes to you and you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Raq. And who are you going to call out to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you find death is coming to you? وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقُ And you find that the soul is leaving your body. وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقُ And your legs are being crossed over one another as you are being prepared for, for your burial. 
ila rabbika yawma idhin al-masaq and at that moment you're being taken to your Lord you're being driven to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala fala saddaqa wa la salla walakin kathaba wa tawalla you know he, he, he did not believe nor did he pray but instead he denied and he turned away ثُمَّ ذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ يَتَمَطَّى أَوْلَىٰ لَكَ فَأَوْلَىٰ ثُمَّ أَوْلَىٰ لَكَ فَأَوْلَىٰ He boasted and he showed arrogance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woe to you! أَوْلَىٰ لَكَ فَأَوْلَىٰ ثُمَّ أَوْلَىٰ لَكَ فَأَوْلَىٰ أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَىٰ أَلَمْ يَكُمْ مُطُفَةً مِّنْ مَنِيٍّ يُمْنَىٰ ثُمَّ كَانَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقَ فَسَوَّىٰ فَجَعْلَ مِنْهُ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَىٰ أَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُحْيَىٰ الْمَوْتَىٰ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't you remember when you were just a dirty drop of fluid and then you were fashioned and molded into an alaq, into that, that suspended clot and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and He saw you through and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created from you pairs أَلَيْسَ ذَٰلِكَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُحْيَىٰ الْمَوْتَىٰ Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you the first time, capable of bringing you back once again? Now realize, subhanAllah, the end of Surah Al-Qiyamah was, the end of Surah Al-Qiyamah is, um, you know, is basically reminding man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that created him in the first place. And that he was created and molded from a dirty drop of fluid. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next surah takes us in Surah Al-Insan to even before that. Surah Al-Insan, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءٌ مَثْكُورَ There was a time when you did not even exist, before you were even a dirty drop of fluid and a suspended clot. Don't you remember, O oh insan, O oh forgetful one, when you were completely non-existent, when you completely had no mention whatsoever, when you were not a recognized thing? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us, uh, you know, when, when He brought our souls to us in the first place and He molded us in the first place, imma shakiran wa imma kafura, you're either grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you're ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah brought you into existence when you were absolutely nothing and Allah could bring you back into existence once again after you've been put into your grave. And Allah in Surah Al-Insan, He really f focuses on gratitude versus ingratitude. That those people who are grateful to Allah and they recognize where they came from, that they are going to be a people who are going to live their lives in, in charity and in caring for those around them. And they recognize their humble origins and they never forget where they came from. Whereas those who are arrogant, you know, will, will continue to boast until they are completely humiliated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into um, uh, the reward of paradise and the reward of hellfire in great detail in Surah Al-Insan. And then finally the last surah, Surah Al-Mursalat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, uh, mentions, uh, takes oaths um, about Yawm Al-Fasr, about the day in which matters would be completely decided. وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ And woe on that day to those that deny so Yawm Al-Fasl comes in Surah Al-Mursalat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguishing and putting the groups in their, ver in their different spots. So this is of course the sorting out of people. And the sorting out of people is in regards to um, their, their, uh, their belief and in their gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them in their respectful, in, in their categories as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, does as a result of how they used to carry themselves and how they used to live their lives. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the righteous. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant us peace and comfort throughout all of the various stages um, of the Day of Judgment. And we ask Allah to forgive us um, for our shortcomings and for all of the things that we, um, you know, all of the different things that that we do that could compromise our status on the Day of Judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that would have the sweet moment of staring at Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and our faces lit up by the vision of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from Ashab al Yameen, to make us from the people that receive their books in their right hands, to make us from the people that enter into Jannah, to, for, to make us from the people that when they're called to do sujood, when they're called to prostrate in this life, they prostrate, and when they're called to prostrate in the next life, that they're able uh, to prostrate. Um, Allahumma Ameen. So, inshallah ta'ala, today, um, you know, the charity that I'm actually going to uh, post today for you guys is actually um, Muslims giving back. Um, and Muslims giving back is the, some of you might remember uh, just a few days ago, we had the unfortunate incident in which, um, in which two young people were, 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 were beaten in front of a masjid in New York. And this is a masjid 
um, you know, that, that, that we find many, many Muslims that do great things and that particularly serve their communities and things of that sort. Um, so inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to post the link to the project of those young people that do great things in going and serving their communities, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so please do, inshallah ta'ala, uh, make sure that you donate to them, that you continue to support them, inshallah ta'ala. We have one more day of Ramadan, most likely. Um, you know, uh, so let's keep strong. Let's end off, inshallah ta'ala, finish strong with all of these um, with all of these different sadaqat and all of these different uh, acts of remembrance and recitation of Qur'an, Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khayran to you all. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll see you tomorrow for our last episode. Uh, please keep the ummah in your du'as. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.